Adobe CS6 Production Premium has a complete set of tools that you can use before you start shooting. Um, in addition to the traditional post-production, authoring, finishing tools, we've actually included in the box a whole series of tools that can help you with screenwriting, um, help you organize and create reports, um, figure out which days you're going to be shooting. And then finally, when you're uh, moving into the process, you've shot your video, we can help you organize your shots and generate rough cuts using a new tool called Adobe Prelude. Let me show you a quick example to start with using Adobe Story. Now what I have here on the screen is a project that contains a number of different documents. If you're not familiar with Story, you can launch Story as a desktop application um, and go into these different types of uh, documents. You can see here I have a series of scripts, some schedules, different reports. Um, if I go in and look at a script, you can see here this is a more traditional type of script, um, your standard uh, film shooting script, but there's many different types of documents that you can create directly inside of Story. I'll go ahead and click on New here and you can see that we have AV scripts such as two column scripts. We can import storyboards into those uh, if we want to get a list of shops, shots going. We can add character bios and then there's new types of documents such as schedules um, that we can create inside of Story. Story also has the ability to manage different types of lists. So if I have a set of recurring characters that maybe I use um, on a recurring show, I can actually import them once and as I'm writing additional scripts and I type in the name of a character, the uh, tools inside of Story that will automatically fill in the names of the characters um, have a list to populate from automatically. I don't have to retype them the first time in each script, it'll use this list of characters. Same thing goes with actors, same thing goes with sets and locations. We can create these lists once and then every time we start writing a new script, um, they'll automatically pop in. In addition to this, we have the ability to create all different types of reports and these are very, very useful as we're going through the whole planning process. We can create camera cards based on a script, we can create uh, costume continuity reports, and these can actually uh, leverage some of the capability of tagging and marking up a script using a tagging panel. Um, we can tag different scenes with different additional metadata information, and uh, this can all be populated and used in these different types of reports. So Story has a lot going for it, and at any point in the process as we're working inside of Story, we can always go through and take a, uh, a given script and export it out in a format called the Adobe Story Interchange format. And this is the key to taking this script and then linking it up with the actual uh, raw media when we get back over into Adobe Premiere Pro. So let me show you one other quick uh, document format here. I want to show you the scheduling capability inside of Story. So this is a, a schedule that's been generated by looking at the script and uh, this is automatically pulled all the different locations and uh, we can color coordinate all these different locations. So we have interior, exterior locations um, and we also have these organized by the actual sets being used. And so this scheduling document gives me the ability to you know, kind of group all the different scenes together so that I don't run into that problem of you know, shooting on a set, striking the set, moving over to a different set, and then suddenly realizing I've got to go back and you know, shoot one more scene on that first set. Um, we can organize everything inside of Story so that uh, as we're going through we can maximize our efficiency in getting our production finished. Now once we're done with uh, Story, we export out our ASTX file we're going to use that in Premiere Pro, but before we get into Premiere Pro, there's actually a new step and there's a new application that's included with Production Premium CS6. This is called Prelude. And Adobe Prelude is a tool that's specifically designed to work with tapeless media, organize tapeless media, and basically make it richer, add descriptive metadata, and kind of rough cut out what our project is going to be. So this is a type of tool that maybe a craft editor is not going to use, um, but a producer could actually jump in and get the shots in the right order and kind of get the editor on their way. So to get started with this, let's go ahead and switch over to Adobe Prelude. Now I've got a project started here and I've gone ahead and imported uh, one clip here, but I'm going to ingest some additional media because the first step in using Prelude is to get uh, my raw media into the application. Now within Prelude, we can look at any type of media card. So if I have an existing uh, P2 card, 
um, XD cam media, maybe a, uh, a card taken out of a 5D Mark II or Mark III. We can insert that into a card reader and ingest from that location. So I can go through and I can pick uh, which clips that I want to ingest from a given hard drive location or a, a given card here. I'll go ahead and select a few different clips here. From here I can choose where I want to copy these clips to. So we'll go ahead and browse to a, a location that we've assigned here. So I'll go ahead and pick the, uh, the hard drive location where I want these clips copied to. Here we've got our uh, Mattel folder and we'll just go ahead and create a new folder and we'll call this Carl Rough Cut. That's going to be the primary location I'm going to copy these to. And we can add subfolders. We can organize the media. There's even a nice option here for verifying the media based on file size or file content, where this will go through an extra step and just give you that extra level of security that you know that what's on the card is what ended up on the hard drive. In addition to this, we can add an additional backup location. So we can add a secondary location where we want our media going. Um, this can also be used as a transcoding option. So I can go ahead and click this transcode box if for some reason I don't want to work with the native file format. And Premiere Pro, of course, is renowned for its ability to work with almost any file format on the planet. Um, but in some cases, maybe I need to generate a proxy style workflow. Maybe I'm doing, you know, a 30 camera multicam shoot. And it'd probably be a good idea to have, you know, maybe some lower res media to, uh, to work with in that environment. My hard drives might not be able to keep up with what Premiere can do. So in those situations, I might want to use a, a transcode option. I also have the ability, if you notice here, if I roll my mouse over these different uh, thumbnails here, I can hover scrub across these and I can even click in this and mark in and out points. So if I am doing a transcode, maybe I have a file that, you know, the camera operator started recording 10 minutes before the actual event. We can make sure and uh, kind of just edit all that stuff out so that doesn't end up being a huge file in my project and then transcode the remaining uh, segment that I actually want to use um, into a new file. So from here, I'll go ahead and just ingest a few clips into my project here. Now, the th key thing to remember working inside of Prelude is that the actual work that we're doing, we're not storing it in a project file. So if I go in and I start to mark up these clips and add metadata to these files, that information actually exists in the raw file. So even if I don't use the Prelude project for anything moving forward, I've still gone in and made those raw assets um, have a richer experience and kind of speed up the editorial process. So from here, I can take, uh, we'll just start with one of these clips here. I'll go ahead and double click on it. We'll go ahead and save and commit our changes to the last clip. And from here, I can start to use keyboard shortcuts. Again, JKL, standardized uh, controls for driving a uh, playback of a clip here. So we'll go ahead and tap the L key to start the playback on this. And uh, I can go ahead and stop, pause, rewind using the J and the K keys kind of go back and forth with this. Now the great thing about this is as this clip is playing back, let's say I see something like, you know, this is going to be the actual end point that I want to use on my clip. I'm going to tap the number one key on the keyboard and you'll notice that this corresponds on the screen to these marker types listed over on the side here. So I can create a sub clip on this clip just by tapping the number one key and I can even do this as the clip is playing back. So we'll go ahead and back up and I'll tap the number one key and this immediately lets me start typing. I can say ramp down and I've named my, uh, my endpoint here and now if I want to go back and actually uh, change the out point, I can go ahead and kind of scrub back on this and I can use the out point here to create the out point on my shot. Alright, so we've marked the in and out points on this clip. Very quickly, let me just go up and uh, we'll save this clip out so that now we actually have a subclip listed here. Um, this is now going to be the, uh, the ramp down shot. We want that to be the beginning of our rough cut edit. So I'm going to go in and create a new rough cut. There's different ways of doing this. I could click the icon here in the project bin. I could go ahead and do this from the uh, file menu here. I'll choose create rough cut. And I've already actually uh, started a rough cut here. We'll go ahead and select that, my Carl rough cut. I'll just choose to replace this. We'll just start from scratch here. And I can go through and take this rough cut timeline, 
we'll move into our rough cut editing mode, and I can start to drag and drop these different clips on here. So here I have a sub clip. This is that ramp down shot. I want that to be the beginning of my rough cut. We'll drag this, drop it down here, and you can see that this now has um, my first clip in my edit ready to go. Now let's go ahead and go back to my logging mode, and I'll go ahead and load up a different clip here. Here we have the, uh, the helicopter shot, and I'll go ahead and maybe pick that up from here. This will be my endpoint, so we'll go ahead and mark that using the number one key, and we'll call this uh, copter down the ramp. And I'll go ahead and play this until about there, mark that as an out point. And again, a key thing here, we'll go ahead and save this. And now we have another subclip here. You can also organize your media types by subclip here so you can see the original assets and then you can see the subclips down below. So now we're gonna go back to our rough cut edit. So I'll just double click on the rough cut and I'll go back into my rough cut mode here so I just see my timeline at the bottom. So here's my first clip. Now to get my second clip in there, we'll just drag this and drop it to the end. And now you can see we've basically rough cut these two clips basically together. We've got this, the car coming down the ramp and then cutting to a different car here. And I can continue to kind of go back and forth between these different modes. I might notice like in this case, uh, this, this copter shot obviously needs a fair amount of color correction. So I could easily go back over to my copter shot and we'll go ahead and go into the logging mode. And I'm just gonna make a quick comment on this shot. Comment, and we'll type in here, and I'm just gonna say match the ramp orange from ramp down shot. So now I'm starting to make notes to the editor about what type of color grading I want. Do I want to match the, uh, the copter shot or do I want to match the other shot? I'm actually putting a note right here in the raw footage saying that, you know, this, this is not the orange I want. I want to match the ramp orange from the other shot in my rough cut here. And those notes are going to come across even as I move into rough cut editing mode or even as I move over into uh, uh, Premiere Pro. These, again, these marks are actually being added to the raw media. So now from Prelude, I could use a command to actually uh, you know, send these files to Premiere Pro. If I uh, select the subclips or the raw shots, um, I could multiple select these and actually send them to Premiere Pro directly. Just to show you that there's no funny business, there's no additional metadata, file, anything else that could potentially get lost, I'm just gonna use a, uh, um, an old fashioned tried and true method of importing these clips. So even if I were to bring these clips over to another system and load them up, you'll see that as I select these clips, open them up on the system, not only do the raw shots come through, but also these little markers here indicate that this is a sub clip. I can see the sub clip name here, copter down the ramp. And if I double click on this, not only does the clip come across, but we can see we have this nice, uh, marker actually shows up in the shot here so I can now read that and I can even go in and uh, type further in that and maybe make some comments for, uh, for down the road for the next person who might be working with my assets. Now the last thing we want to talk about, we were talking briefly about Adobe Story at the beginning of this and I just wanted to point out that another way we can add metadata to our video footage is by using the metadata panel within Premiere we can go in and attach that Adobe Story script to our video footage. So I'll go ahead and double click on this clip. You can see here we've got uh, part of the interview footage, this gentleman talking. I want to attach the, uh, the metadata to this. Now I'm gonna do one quick thing here. I've got my source, uh, my bin here with all my different source clips. I'm gonna use the tilde key to just bring this up full screen because I wanna show you one little uh, column that you'll find here. If I scroll across here, you'll notice that I've added some scene numbers to these different clips. This makes uh, attaching a large script. Um, this is something that uh, I had to do manually here, but what this does is it means when I go through and I attach a script, it's gonna know exactly which chunk of that script. I can just 
bring in an entire script with you know 100 different scenes and it will just attach the information for the particular scene that's relevant to this raw material. So I've got this one set up for scene two. We'll go ahead and tilt it back out of the project panel here. And to attach the script, I just right click on the file and choose attach script file and point it at the appropriate place here. Here we have our uh, Fearless at the 500 script. This is the goldenrod revision. Script revisioning, it's another great feature inside a story. We'll go ahead and double click on that. And you'll see here that this actually even has the embedded Adobe Story script, but this also includes all kinds of information about the you know, scene location, time of day, all of that information also becomes searchable inside of Premiere. So I hope you see that uh, Premiere Pro and the production premium package really have a complete end-to-end -end metadata workflow that uses tools like Adobe Story and Adobe Prelude to make the editing environment faster and a richer experience so that you can move quicker and you can get your job done much easier. Thanks for watching.